All right, guys, welcome back to FBA Elite. Now, I want to be completely honest with you in this video. This week, I really, really wanted to make a positive Amazon FBA video because I know the last few weeks I've been a bit downbeat on Amazon and I've been really, really trying this week to come up with ideas that could be positive. However, as you can tell from my new slogan suggestion for Jeff, that again, this is going to be a mostly negative video, unfortunately. However, make sure you do stick around to the end because there is some good news that I want to share with you guys. So why is this video gonna be a little bit negative? What's happened to me this week in the Amazon FBA world? Well, the first thing that happened to me this week is I received an Amazon IPI announcement email because they are making some changes to the IPI. Now, if you remember back to one of my videos from a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned that I was concerned about my IPI dropping due to the fact that my sales had slowed up so much. Now, for those of you that are new to Amazon, the IPI is your inventory performance index and it's the score that Amazon gives you based on four different metrics and based on your overall score, they will then give you a threshold as to how much inventory you can send into the Amazon Fulfillment Centers for the next quarter. So at the moment, my IPI is 391, which wasn't an issue a few days ago, but I'll come back to that in a moment. So the IPI itself is calculated on these four different metrics. You've got the excess inventory percentage, which I've got the green light on is great. You've got the FBA sell-through, which is red because obviously at the moment I'm not selling as well as I'd like to. You've got stranded inventory percentage and the FBA in stock rate. So all of those things are green. They're great except for my sell-through rate. Now my sell-through rate has dropped off. There's no question about that. And that is why my IPI is dropping. However, a lot of the drop off in that sell-through is down to the way that Amazon have implemented policy changes based on the current global events. So let me go back to the Amazon IPI email that I received. And the only bits you really need to focus on are the bits in bold. So the first bit in bold says, effective immediately, we are raising the IPI threshold requirements for Q3 storage limits to 400, previously 350. Now when they're saying raising, that sounds like a positive thing, but it's not because the threshold itself was 350 and you dropped towards it instead. Uh, but now I've dropped under the 400, so I'm already under that IPI threshold. And if you look at the next bit, it says, you are now subject to storage limits from the 1st of July to September 30th if your IPI is still less than 400 during the week of June 21st. So I've got six weeks to try to improve my IPI. Now the only thing that's wrong on my IPI at the moment is my sell-through rate. So I need to try and find ways to generate more sales so that I can improve my sell-through rate and hopefully stop my IPI dropping and hopefully send it into reverse and get my IPI to start increasing. If I don't, then I will have restrictions placed on my account and I won't be able to send as much inventory into the Amazon warehouses in Q3. And also, as it says at the bottom, effective from August 1st, a monthly overage fee of £7.80 per cubic foot will be introduced. So if I do have stock above that new limit that they're gonna set for me in the Amazon warehouses, they will charge me £7.80 per cubic foot. So it will be a very, very expensive thing if I'm unable to get my IPI back up and exceed the new limits that they set for me. So as you can understand, I'm very, very frustrated by this because my IPI drop in I would put mainly at the door of Amazon and the policy changes that they implemented more so than anything I have actually done. And that will become clearer later on as I recap some of the changes that Amazon have implemented. Now, the other thing that happened this week is that I received an Amazon verification email. Now, this email I almost missed because I thought it was spam. And if you become an Amazon FBA seller, you'll get lots of emails from Amazon every day promoted in one service or another. So when I read the subject, and that's why I've included it on this screenshot, it says, know your customer, KYC, verification process support. So just on reading the subject alone, I thought again this was another spam email as it didn't really seem to make sense to me. Um, and then I read the first two lines, which are dear seller, greetings from Amazon, which is how most of their spam emails start. However, I then read on further and it said, to sell on Amazon, you must complete an account verification process. Well, I did that the best part of two years ago because I've been selling on Amazon for a little while now. Um, and you must complete this verification process before reaching 15,000 euros or GBP equivalent of disbursements or your account will be suspended. So, you know, nice and friendly email from Amazon as ever. Now, I've been selling on Amazon for the best part of two years and I've sold just over a quarter of a million pound of goods. So my disbursement level is well above that 15,000 euro limit. So that makes no sense to start with. But effectively, what I had to do was spend about half hour going to the company's house website, downloading a completely free document, which I then had to upload to the Amazon seller verification page. And then within 24 hours, they re-verified my account. So I'm not against Amazon verifying sellers and re-verifying sellers. It just seems a bit strange to do it at the moment. Also to do it in this way with a template email that obviously wasn't designed for people that had been selling for a long time. They also need to work on the subject of their email as well because that could have easily been missed and I could have easily seen that as spam like many of the other emails that Amazon sent to me. 
Now before I move on to the piece of good news that I have for you guys, I just want to recap on how Amazon has treated sellers over the past five, six weeks as part of the global crisis. Now it's not that I necessarily want to be negative about Amazon, I just want you to know what it's like to work with a company like Amazon and how you have very little control over very, very big changes. So the first thing that Amazon did as part of their response to the current global crisis was to introduce restrictions on the shipments that you could send into the Amazon fulfillment centers. Now that made complete sense to me, these fulfillment centers were getting overrun and they didn't want any more stock being sent in until they managed to process the current stock they had. So I completely understood that. Now it would have been nice if Amazon had given us a few weeks notice so that we could have cancelled any outstanding orders with their suppliers. For example, like me, I just ordered a thousand units of stock that I then had to get my supplier to sit on for quite a few weeks until Amazon allowed me to create a new shipment to send that product into the Amazon fulfillment centers. The next thing they did was delayed or prevented removal orders. So for me, that was really frustrating because I had stock stuck at Amazon that was unable to sell for other reasons, which I'm gonna come back to in a moment, but I couldn't remove that stock because the removal orders had either been delayed or prevented the, us from creating them. So that was super frustrating that we had stock that we were paying storage fees on, but couldn't actually have removed from the Amazon fulfillment centers. The next thing they did was to extend the prime delivery dates, which I completely supported again. They had so much stock and so many orders to process that providing prime delivery was probably very, very difficult for the fulfillment center warehouse staff. However, again, it was implemented very, very unfairly. And as I covered in my previous videos, we saw niches where one product had availability for next day or a couple of days, and then competing products maybe had a two week delivery window or even a one month delivery window, which is what I had with my product. So imagine trying to compete with sellers that had their products available for next day delivery while your product is sat there with a 30 day delivery date. It was super frustrating. And that for me was probably the most unfair policy change that Amazon implemented and did the most damage to my business and my listings. Now as a token gesture from Amazon to recognize the fact that they had stock stuck in the warehouses that we couldn't sell due to what Amazon had implemented, they did waive some of the long-term storage fees in April. Now long-term storage fees only applies to products that have been in Amazon fulfillment centers for over a year. So it's only a very, very small amount of people that actually benefited from it. And people like myself who actually had a good sell-through rate at the time saw no benefit from these long-term storage fees being waived. They did, however, waive monthly storage fees as well, which is a very nice thing for them to do. However, it was only for a two-week period. Now, I've had stocks sat at Amazon now for over six weeks that I've been unable to sell. So getting a two-week break on the storage fees is a bit of a kick in the teeth when I've had stocks stuck there for so long with most of it being outside of my control. Now, throughout this period, like I said earlier, I get lots of spam emails from Amazon. They were constantly promoting Amazon loans. You know, sign up for more debt while you've got inventory stuck in their warehouses. They're also promoting Amazon PPC. You know, promote your listings while you've got a 30-day delivery window. And I understand these just might seem like niggly complaints, but it just goes to show that not really thinking it through, they're promoting these services in a time when people are really really struggling. The next thing they did was to increase the IPI threshold as I just covered on the previous slides. And this one obviously is very specific to me, but they put my account into verification as well. So I need to re-upload some documents to verify my account. So that's how Amazon has treated sellers during the global crisis, which I think could have been handled a lot, lot better. And I know that some sellers have been unaffected by what's happened and some sellers have even benefited. You know, they've seen their sales go up, but there's no way you can look at that list and honestly say to yourself that Amazon have treated their sellers well during this crisis. So finally, on to a little bit of good news, and that is a sales update. Now, if you think back to a couple of weeks ago, I said that, look, I've got to start selling my products, and the way to do that is going to be a price dump. So that's what I did. So this is an update on my sales, and I'm gonna take you over to some live charts in a minute. So. I think the video that I made saying that I was going to reduce my prices to break even to try and sell through some of this inventory was the 1st of May, I believe, so about two weeks ago. Um, you can see that the sales have increased um, reasonably since then. You know, Most days now I'm getting close to double figures and this only shows up to the 13th of May, um, but yesterday I sold 20 units, which would have been the first time I've sold 20 units. Um, since towards the end of March. So there is some positive, you know, things are hopefully improving. The fact that lockdown in the UK has been released ever so slightly, hopefully is re-inspiring people to buy more stuff. And what I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna take you back to Seller Central so I can show you some stats around the sales. Now the main stat that I want to show you in Seller Central is the order item session percentage, which is effectively your conversion rate. And if we scroll down, and I've covered this in previous videos, for our April, my conversion rate was pretty poor with some days in single figures, and if I was lucky, I might break into double figures some days. Now, since I've dropped my prices around the 1st of March, you can see pretty much every day is in double figures. And I'd probably say the average over that period is above 15%. And you can see here on the graph, this is how it converts to sales. Sales really dropped off when lockdown began. April was super quiet. 
then when I started reducing prices, they have picked up. And actually what I'll do, let me just change this graph to swap that from sales to the actual session percentage. And you can see here again, for April, they were struggling to get into double figures most days, yet since the price cut, things have picked up. So hopefully with a combination of the price drops and the slight relaxation of lockdown in the UK, sales will continue on an upward trajectory throughout May. Now I know I've been quite negative about Amazon recently, but I want to assure all of you guys, I plan to continue with Amazon. I am in this for the long haul and I will recover my account back to some really, really good sales. And of course, I'll be sharing it with you guys as I go. If however, Amazon seems a little bit risky for you at the moment and you want to look at an alternative business model, I invite you to subscribe to my other YouTube channel at honestmoney.co.uk. On there, I'm documenting the process of me starting my own print on demand business. So that could be an alternative to Amazon FBA that may appeal to some of you guys. And I invite you to come over there and subscribe to the channel. Now, if you've been selling on Amazon FBA recently and you've been hit by what's happened, or even if you've had good sales, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments. Let me know how things are going for you and what your thoughts are of Amazon FBA at the moment. And I'll see you guys in the next video.